Welcome to the Chemistry, Biology and Math Revision Hub. Today we are doing the Pearsonet Excel International A-Level Chemistry, Unit 1 for June 2022. This is the Part 3 video. I'll put the link to 1 and Part 2 video below the description box. Let's begin. Question 22 says, Zingiberin is the compound that gives ginger its characteristic flavor. Its IUPAC name is 2-methyl, 5-6-methyl, hept 5 in yael bracket cyclohexa 13 diin it's a very long name so they say a on the structure of zingiberin draw a circle around the two methyl group referred to in the iu pack i think this should be if you can observe this should be the methyl group they're referring to based on this part two methyl there are only uh, a few potential methyl groups it could be that but that cannot be carbon two it could be also that if this is a carbon 2, then how can we call uh, there should be another on carbon 5? So this one cannot be because when you look at the, the, the longer structure, the cyclohexa, I want to refer to the cyclohexa 1, 3 day in, it should refer that there is a carb, this is carbon 1. I want to go back here, look at this structure in the cyclo. This gives it away. If you look at that structure, we can see this is going to be uh, carbon 1 carbon 2 and carbon 3 meaning there is a, a double bond on carbon 1 and a double bond on carbon 3 so that means this is the carbon 2 so that should be the methyl group we're referring to the answer should be this part here the next part says it use the molecular formula of zingiberin to do this you have to some students are really good at decoding it very fast but if you cannot please remember to position the carbons you will avoid making mistakes if you have enough time try to position them and then put the hydrogens really fast where they should be. Make sure when you're putting the hydrogens, you're counting very fast in order to be able to make everything right. I'm going to erase this, but please remember to do that. It makes it easier to avoid making mistakes on questions that could be easily done. So for me, when I did this, I found out there are 15 carbons and 24 hydrogens in total. So I can deduce the, the molecular formula is carbon 15, hydrogen 24. Moving on, they say... When zingiberin reacts with excess hydrogen bromide, there are, are a number of possible products. The structure of the major product is given below. Now, remember, if it reacts with excess hydrogen bromide, it means all the carbon-carbon double bonds are going to be removed, meaning there is going to be hydrogen and Br that are attached in their place. So here they say the structure of the major product is going to be that. Let us go down here. They ask you, Name the type and mechanism for this reaction. The type of reaction is an addition reaction and the mechanism is an electrophilic uh, reaction. So you could say electrophilic addition reaction in total. When there is a carbon-carbon double bond and a hydrogen bromide it is coming in, uh, the double bond breaks giving the electron here because this is going to be partially positive and that's partially negative due to the electronegativity of bromine. Bromine is more electronegative it pulls the electrons in the bond towards itself and the double bond breaks. When it breaks, this one also breaks and therefore the bromine takes the electrons becoming a bromide minus and this one is going to gain the, the double carbon in the carbon-carbon double bond is going to gain the B, uh, the hydrogen first. You can see, um, let me show you here, this hydrogen is going to be attached to one of these carbons in the carbon-carbon double bond and this bond is going to break. These electrons here are going to go to this creating a negatively charged ion. Anyway, that is part of the mechanism, but the real reaction should be uh, addition reaction and the mechanism electrophilic. So if they ask type and mechanism, we can say electrophilic addition. Moving on, they say the diagram shows a simplified structure of zingiberin in which part of the molecule is represented as A. Complete the mechanism for the reaction of zingiberin with one molecule of hydrogen bromide. Yeah, it's way easier when they replace this with something else because the molecule was really long and uh, it would be harder for students to do the whole mechanism because there is a chance of making mistakes every time when you're drawing the longer one. So I think it's better that way. So they want us to complete the mechanism uh, for the reaction of zingiberin with one molecule of hydrogen bromide. That is why they've just put for us one carbon-carbon double bond. So I want to show this partial plus and this partial minus. Oh, by the way, that should be there. So... As this approaches, you can see 
uh, the hydrogen and Br are going to be around the carbon-carbon uh, double bond. The carbon-carbon double bond breaks, giving the electrons to this partially positive hydrogen. And this is also going to break, going to the Br, creating a negatively charged ion, which is bromide ion. And then this hydrogen can be attached to either this one or that one. So here they told us one of them. So I made this positive and I put the hydrogen on this carbon here, as you can see there. And finally, when this, I brought back this same thing here so that the bromide can return, the, the bromide can come here with this lone pair to this point, and then we get our product. The key thing here is we have to ensure that you show the lone pair. These electrons on the lone pair are the ones that are being donated to this uh, uh, deficient or positively charged carbon. I'll call it the carbocation. So it receives these lone pairs of electrons in that dative covalent bond, and then the Br- minus binds onto it. So that is it. Continuing, they say, for the reaction in C12, there are two possible products. So yeah, this reaction here, there are two possible products. In one possible way, these, uh, the hydrogen could be on here, and in another way, the hydrogen could be here, and that could be there, depending on which pathway the mechanism has taken. So here they say, uh, down here, for the reaction in C2, there are two possible products. So there is this product here, and there is that product here. I want to give you an example of these carbocations. Attached recarbocation is going to be like that, attached to some other groups, maybe group A, group, uh, let me say X, Y, and Z. Secondary carbocation could be just a carbon that there are only two groups attached to it. So in this case, we have one R group, the next and the third. So it means if this was positive, the carbocation formed was touch free. And in this case, we had a hydrogen, we have uh, some uh, group A, and then we have that, it could have been secondary. So I went on to say, they say, explain why I is the major product by referring to a mechanism. Now back to my mechanism, I said, because the mechanism occurred via formation of a touch free carbocation, you can see for I, while for I, number one, two, this one here, is formed via secondary carbocation. Tash recarbocations are more stable than secondary carbocations. So this pathway is going to be more stable, and therefore we're going to produce a more product through this mechanism, or all through the mechanism with the tash recarbocation in comparison to the other with a mechanism uh, that creates a secondary carbocation. So let's continue to the next part. Here they say, Zingiberin reacts with hydrogen gas in the presence of a catalyst. Identify the catalyst by name or formula. This is hydrogenation. If you are reacting with hydrogen, hydrogenation to form an alkene. In this case, nickel catalyst has to be used for this reaction. Uh, this is something that is basic. Then next they say, two mole of zingiberin react completely with hydrogen at 150 degrees Celsius under pressure of that. They want you to calculate the minimum volume of hydrogen needed under these conditions, stating your units. So to do this, remember this is that uh, they've given us the information here. Number of moles is 2.0. I wrote all this information. So number of moles is 2.0 of this. And then we have the temperature, which is 150. When we are using this formula, the temperature has to be converted to Kelvin. So you add to 73, you get that. Pressure is in kilopascals. We have to convert it to pascals. So we multiply by 1000 and you get that. And then they say it calculate the minimum volume. So we are looking for volume. Now, remember, we have number of moles of this. There are two moles. Each, each will require one, two, three moles of hydrogen. So it means in total, we are going to need six moles of hydrogen for two moles of this. This, each one molecule has three different carbon-carbon double bonds, and each carbon-carbon double bond needs at least one hydrogen molecule. So if you have two moles of these, we will need uh, three times that, which is going to be six. And uh, that's why here I said six moles. So now when we make this the subject and substitute all the information we have uh, been able to convert to the appropriate units, we will see now N is going to be 6, R is given 8.31, T is this temperature 4 to 3, and the pressure is 120,000. This is going to be 0 0.17575 meters cubed as the answer. They have not told us to give our answer in any appropriate significant figures, but you could try to write 0 0.17, maybe 0 0.176 or so meters cubed. This brings us to the end of question 22. Let's go to question 23. Question 23. Organic waste may be disposed by, of by landfill or incineration. Both processes produce gases. 
So they've given us a table here. They say the main gas is produced from a typical landfill as shown in the table. So we have the gases and their percentages. Methane is 50%, carbon dioxide 45%, nitrogen 4%, and sulfur compounds 1%. They send them the process that forms the gases in landfills. These gases, some of them could be formed by fermentation, others by decomposition, others by biodegradation, and so on. So many processes can lead to formation of these gases. Some processes could be biological and others maybe not. So any of these would be okay. Part to say state the main environmental problem caused by landfill gases, identifying the gases or the gas or gases responsible. The easiest one is global warming, and this is uh, which leads to climate change. It's produced by mainly methane and carbon dioxide among these. So that is okay. Next, they say one ton of landfill waste produce, uh, produces approximately 12.5 decimeter cubed of landfill gases per day. They say calculate the mass of carbon dioxide produced in a year by a typical landfill site which contains 90,000 tons of waste. Remember one ton produces that per day. So 90,000 tons is going to produce that times that uh, of waste that is going to be again per day. So then if you want to here they told us calculate the mass of carbon dioxide produced per year it means you have to find a way of multiplying by the number of days in a year, which could be 365, and find the value appropriately. So, uh, okay, let's continue. They said, assume the gas volume is measured at room temperature and pressure, and the molar gas volume is that. They want you to calculate the mass of CO2. Here they gave us one ton, produces 12 decimeters. 90,000 tons are going to produce a specific volume, and then we will use that volume and the equation of molar gas volume to find a way of getting the, basically, the mass we are looking for. So I said one ton waste produces 12.5 decimeter cubed gases as given in that equation. So the 90,000 tons of waste will produce that amount. Remember, that is per day, which is 1125000 decimeters cubed. And we know they've given us the information that volume of carbon dioxide produced is 45%. Of the total gases this is from the table here so remember all these are gases this is going to be the total volume uh, of landfill gases this is per day total volume of landfill gases however of these gases 45 percent is going to be co2 so 45 over 100 times that gives us this amount this is the amount this is the volume of carbon dioxide produced by 90,000 tons of waste per day now i had to find the number of moles of carbon dioxide which is going to be that divide by 24 will give me the number of moles. Divide that and get that. Now, these are the number of moles of carbon dioxide produced from the 90,000 tons of waste per day. I needed to find the mass of CO2 produced by these 90,000 tons of waste per day, which should be uh, moles of um, these moles produced times the, the MR, or I would say molar mass of CO2, which is going to be that times 44. This gives me 928125 grams of carbon dioxide per day. Finally, I have to get that produced in a year. In a year, we have 365 days. Uh, that is going to be that time 365, which gives me that. And uh, converting this to tons, I created 338.77 tons per year. So that's the end of this part. Let us continue. Here they say suggest two advantages of incineration of a landfill. Incineration is when the waste is burnt. One advantage we see is that it's going to save up the space that could where the uh, material would pile up and pile up and pile up. Uh, so we can see pollution pollutants can be trapped. So this process you can carry out uh, the burning in a controlled environment whereby some toxic gases or toxic waste can be easily trapped instead of leaving it to break down freely in the environment releasing all these toxins. There is also a decrease in the size of the required waste dumping site. Yeah, that's correct. You burn so that there is less dumping site that is going to be used. The produced heat can be used to generate electricity. Once these substances are burnt, heat is going to be released. That heat can be used for other benefits. And then it decreases on the transportation cost of waste. Mostly for incineration, waste can be burnt closer to the areas where it's generated and therefore it minimizes the pollution or the transportation costs 
that could be involved uh, because I said here incinerators, incinerators can be built closer to urban areas. Yet uh, you guys know well, la landfills cannot be closer to urban areas because the smell is going to be so great, so big. Lastly, they say environmental groups prefer recycling to both recycling to both landfill and incineration. Suggest one advantage of recycling. Recycling is going to require less energy use, and uh, recycling helps us to get this material that we can conserve. We can conserve material. Resources are going to be conserved so that they can be reused instead of wasting them and looking for newer materials to make new products. This brings us to the end of this question, as well as the, the third video of this paper. Thank you for being with us. Please do not forget to subscribe. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.